Hello and welcome to Money Live News and Views. I am Devashish Basu. The Narendra Modi government has secured the parliament's nod for three farm bills that it wants to convert into laws making contract farming legal and free trading of farm products possible. As I'd mentioned in June, this would be a revolutionary move if implemented the way it's intended. It is the biggest reform move attempted after 1991. A second huge reform move pushed through last fortnight again was the repeal of old labor laws. The parliament has passed three bills that have codified 44 labor laws under four heads, which is wages, industrial relations, social security and working conditions. The code on wages was passed by parliament last year. Among the various provisions, business entities with less than 300 employees can fire employees easily now. These two moves have burnished the reformist image of this regime, which has been fading. It has also raised flagging expectations of those who expected large-scale reforms but have been disappointed so far, since labor and agriculture have been among the most naughty issues which the government has now tackled head-on, it is easy to hope that more reforms are on their way. In fact, one may even be tempted to conclude that Mr. Modi is finally living up to his promise of development and job creation through these reforms. But before you jump to this conclusion, consider these other events of the past two weeks. British Telecom major Vodafone has just won the arbitration against India in, in regard to retrospective tax demand at the Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague. The unanimous ruling said that the India's tax department has not been fair and equitable to Vodafone. It observed that retrospective taxation in contradiction to the Supreme Court's judgment in favor of Vodafone was in breach of bilateral investment treaty. The case spans four regimes, two led by the Congress and two by the Bharatiya Janata Party, which tells you that it's the same thing for a businessman no matter who comes to power. Successive governments have tried to extort a piece of Vodafone's $11 billion acquisition of a 67% stake in mobile phone business owned by Hutchison in 2007 through, through some weird tax logic. When the government lost the case in the Supreme Court, it enacted a new law in 2012 with retrospective effect and tried to extract 7,990 crore in capital gains taxes plus interest in penalty. When Arun Jetli was the opposition leader, he was Vodafone's legal counsel and he, all, he had also criticized the retrospective amendment as did Mr. Narendra Modi. But when they assumed power, not only was the amendment not scrapped, but on 12th February 2016, Vodafone received a notice from, of an outstanding tax demand of 22,100 crore along with a threat to confiscate Indian assets if the tax was not paid. This is why a big supporter of this government, financial expert Vanlab Bansali, said a few weeks ago, unfortunately in our country, governments don't like to lose. If some tax regime or provisions goes against the government, it goes and changes the law. The citizen is battered and that there is no way his innovation can work and he must always lose to the government. Subsidies, arbitration awards are not paid fully and therefore there's a lack of confidence. The second event last fortnight was US motorcycle manufacturer Harley Davidson decision to exit India due to extremely poor volumes and profitability even though it had the US President Donald Trump himself pushing India to reduce tariffs so that Harley can import its components cheaper. Earlier in 2017, General Motors wound up operations and sold its plant. Last year, Ford Motor Company transferred most of its India's assets to a joint venture with Mahindra & Mahindra after struggling for two decades in the world's fourth largest automobile market. It is surely not anyone's fault that Harley, GM and Ford are leaving India and not able to do business here. But then, last fortnight, there was this third event. Shekhar Vishwanathan, Vice President of Toyota Kirloska Motors said that Toyota won't expand any further in India because of the country's tax regime, high taxes on vehicles. The message we are, are, the message we are getting after we have come here and invested money is that we don't want you, Vishwanath told Bloomberg. You think that the auto sector is making drugs or liquor given the high level of taxes. 
at the slightest sign of a product doing well they slap it with a higher tax and a higher tax rate the the high taxes puts cars out of the reach of many consumers while factories lie idle and jobs aren't created he alleged so the past two weeks would have told you everything you need to know about doing business in india the promises and assertions of netas and babus mean nothing news laws however well-meaning are irrelevant what really matters is implementation on the ground every law is finally implemented by a vast army of officials inspectors taxmen and the police force who are often extortive as i write this i recall that ironically some 26 years ago i had written a piece in business standard arguing that it's the implementation that should matter only in india and that we shouldn't get too excited about every announcement of reforms it was the heydays of reforms under narsimha rao and dr manmohan singh over nine different regimes and over three decades most of our reforms have delivered too little because they slipped out of the leaky bucket of implementation thanks for watching